Back in the days of DOS, which I hardly even remember, we could only do one thing at a time on a computer. The ability to multitask, which is to run more than one program at a time, was introduced in Windows early on. Initially, the programs got to decide when they would give up control over the processor. Sometimes they got a little bit stingy and wouldn't give up that control, leaving us unable to do anything else while that one application did its thing. This was known as cooperative multitasking because the programs had to cooperate together. If you are a parent, or if you're a sibling, you understand how this concept of cooperation may seem good and work a lot of the time, but on occasion it becomes problematic. Windows 95 introduced a new concept called preemptive multitasking, which enabled the operating system to give control of the processor to the application that it thought should have priority. In our analogy, the operating system kind of became the parent, the person who can tell which child to do what and help control the melee. In prior versions of Windows, we multitasked or accessed running programs usually through the taskbar on the desktop. For example, if we had multiple applications running, like we do now, we could go down to the taskbar. In this case, we have Notepad, Calculator, and Word running, and we could either simply click on the button to switch between the tasks, or we could use something called Alt-Tab switching which is basically where we hold the Alt key with our thumb, and while we're holding the Alt key, we press and release the Tab key. This brings up a small window in the middle of the screen, and as we continue to press and release Tab, it scrolls through each of the open applications, showing us a little thumbnail and the name of the application and the name of the file. When we get to the one we want, we simply release the Alt key, and that becomes the active application. That's the way multitasking has worked for many, many generations of the Windows operating system. The most important part about either one of these processes is only one window can be active at a time. While we can have multiple windows open, it's the active window that gets our attention or has our focus or where everything important happens, like cutting, copying, pasting, and even saving. I was always really big on Alt-Tabbing because I can do this. While pressing and releasing Alt-Tab, I can move between different applications very quickly. Let's go ahead and minimize these two windows. Now there's nothing special about this, except that while I continue to work, I want to make sure that we can see the desktop very clearly. So we'll minimize the calculator, and we'll minimize Word, and we'll minimize Notepad, so that we see nothing here but the desktop itself. What is new to Windows 8 is how the Windows 8 style applications work with multitasking. So far we've been working in kind of the traditional way. I'm going to go ahead and press the Windows key in order to get us to the start screen. And now I'm going to go ahead and launch one of our Windows 8 style applications. Let's go ahead and take a look at the weather. By clicking or tapping on the weather tile, it launches the weather application, and after just a couple of seconds, it shows us the current weather in London. When we're working in Windows 8 style applications, our multitasking works a little bit differently. For example, if I press Alt-Tab like I did just a moment ago, we do still get to see the standard Alt-Tab switching that we're used to. We can move back to Notepad, and we can very quickly get back to our full screen version of the Windows 8 Weather app. What works differently is if we use the Windows key plus the Tab key. So I'm going to hold down the Windows key and press and release the Tab key. What we see now is the Windows 8 version of multitasking, where we still see the desktop in this case, but it shows up on the left hand side as nothing more than a thumbnail. When I release the Windows key, then I of course move to the traditional desktop. And by doing Windows Tab again, I can move back to the Windows 8 Weather app. So far, that means in Windows 8, we can multitask the traditional way or the updated way using combinations with the Tab key. In Windows 8, though, if we move to the upper left hand corner of the screen, we can also see a thumbnail for the most recently used application. In this case, that would be the desktop. So that's a third option. This would be important, of course, for people working on touch devices who don't have a keyboard and don't want to have to bring up a virtual keyboard, where actually Alt-Tab switching isn't an option anyway. So this is important for people working on those touch devices. But let's take a look at how Windows 8 really differs from prior versions when it comes to multitasking. If we move to the top of the Weather app, we get the hand cursor. I'm going to press and hold my left mouse button, and I'm going to drag this application to the left side of the screen and let it go. And we can see that it kind of docks itself and takes up, oh, roughly maybe a third of the screen. This is a smaller version. Of course, it doesn't have the beautiful picture in the background, but now it's not taking up the entire screen. 
Now let's go ahead and launch another Windows 8 app. I'm going to press the Windows key to move back to our start screen. And let's say that in addition to the weather, we also want to take a look at a map. So we'll go ahead and click or tap on the Maps tile. What we can see is this is now going to open up in the larger portion or the right-hand side of the screen. Fabulous! Now I can look at the weather in London as well as the map of London at the same time. This actually makes it very useful. Hopefully you can start thinking about many different ways that you could use this. For example, maybe having an email open on one side with a web browser on the other or something like that. All right, well now how do we manipulate this screen? Well, one thing we can do is move between the apps. You can kind of see a black vertical bar or space here. Our cursor turns into a double-headed arrow. We can now resize these two different panes. For example, if I drag over to the right, I can make the weather the larger portion. And of course, it goes back to the enlarged version as well with the nice picture, but the map becomes small. You will notice that we don't have a lot of flexibility here. When I start to drag back to the left, when I get about halfway, it basically breaks it down into a one-third, two-thirds ratio. Currently, that's kind of what we're stuck with, and so this particular version works with the weather being the smaller portion. If you happen to be picky and you just don't want to see the weather on the left and the map on the right, have no fear, we can swap the two around as well. By moving to the top of the screen and getting the hand cursor for our map, pressing and holding the left button on the mouse, and dragging to the right, you can see that we can simply swap the two left to right. By the way, currently we must have our screen resolution set to at least 1366 by 768 to have enough room for the split multitasking screen to work. If we don't have the minimum resolution, the traditional multitasking windows will display in the middle of the screen, like we saw when we did Alt-Tab switching. So far, we've seen three different ways to do that type of switching. Alt-Tab, the Windows key tab, and the upper left-hand corner that shows us our most recently used application. But that upper left-hand corner has some special functionality as well. If we move up there and we see the screen, but we press and hold our left mouse button and drag or swipe down, we can actually change to whatever that application was. Now this is where it gets a little bit confusing because we're seeing the traditional desktop as part of the Windows 8 split screen and still seeing the Windows 8 weather app on the right-hand side. But if we think about it, this is great because it means we can use both old and new applications at the same time. If we move to the upper left-hand corner, again, we can see the map as we would expect. If I drag all the way down, you can see how I'm kind of just bumping things out of the way. The map now becomes the active application, and the traditional desktop takes over the main part of the screen. So we can make all kinds of different configuration changes here all day long. What I want you to know is that when I first started using this, I had to run through it a couple of times because it is a little bit different. And sometimes if we don't click and drag in exactly the right way, it works a little bit strangely. Don't get frustrated. It only takes a couple of times before you get the hang of the new way that we multitask. If we're done multitasking, we can simply close a window. Even though we're looking at the traditional desktop, we are looking in the Windows 8 style. So I have to move to the top of the screen, get the little grabber hand, and just drag all the way to the bottom of the screen to get back to the map. I could then close the map as well, doing exactly the same thing. This brings us back to our start screen. It certainly would be nice if we could start a particular task and work completely through it without having to do anything else. I think I've had dreams about something like that, but the reality is that isn't the way we get to work these days. If nothing else, we often use multiple windows as we do research or refer to other references while we do work on a single task much less needing to truly multitask in our day. Long gone are the days when the computer would take control of an application and refuse to give it up, often leave us sitting for long periods of time, waiting for the little flipping hourglass cursor to go away. This is why multitasking has been and continues to be an important function. Windows 8 continues to provide the service, including some new innovative methods for multitasking using the Windows 8 style interface and applications.